Good afternoon, everybody. And after a short break, Toxopedia is back with a bang. And this month, especially October 11, is celebrated as International Girl Child Day. And on this occasion, I thought of having a very special series, including some... I'm sorry, somebody... Uh, So this month, I decided to conduct a special series including trendsetters, especially those women who have made a difference in the world by taking some wonderful steps towards their career, creating a niche for themselves um, in this world. And today, I present the very first speaker of this series, the trendsetters. But before I introduce our guest speaker to all of you, as you all know that Toxopedia is a weekly online series where you meet speakers from different parts of the world who come here and conduct sessions on various topics. Now, there are certain rules and regulations that you need to follow when you join. Keep yourself on mute. You can keep your videos on, but if you think that you are not in a comfortable position and not uh, in a comfortable place, I suggest, I, I request rather, to keep your video switched off. You can keep a notepad and pencil along with you so that you can take down important points from the session. During the question and answer session, you are free to switch on your video and unmute yourself and ask the questions directly to our speaker or else you can send your questions to me in private. Now, it's time to introduce our guest speaker. Our guest speaker is my friend. I met her during one of the interview sessions when I was in the radio and I did not get a chance to interview her, but I had invited her for the interview session. And little did I know at that time that she can do wonders with some waste materials. And when I say some waste material, I'm talking about discarded plastic. She uses plastic bottles, cans, plastic bags, and turn them into beautiful art forms. And when I say art forms, it is not the usual art forms that we see. It is very unique and special art forms. She calls herself the plastic sculptor. She has been conducting a lot of exhibitions and exhibited her art forms in various uh, places, rather than rather various countries. And she is here to share her journey with you and to also let you know how you can use and popularize your skill using social media. So please help me welcome our guest speaker, Swapna Nambudri. So now give me two seconds, I'll put you in spotlight and then you can start. Yes, the screen is yours. Hi, Risha. Oh my God, I'm still blushing. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. Uh, thank you and good afternoon to everyone present here. Thank you so much for joining this session. And I'm so honored and it's my pleasure to be able to speak a few words about my art journey on this platform. Thank you, Nisha, again. Uncertainty, that's a common word which is trending these days. And I know we all are going through these uncertain times, facing so many imperfect things and uncertain moments. But yes, that's the truth. But have you tried to embrace those imperfect moments or imperfect happenings around you or these uncertain moments? Have you tried to find some sort of beauty in those moments? I tried it, and believe me, it works wonders. Wabi Sabi, as Nisha explained about this uh, session, it's Wabi Sabi, it's based on the whole concept. It's a beautiful Japanese philosophy centered around this concept of accepting, accepting these imperfect moments or uncertain things or imperfect things and incomplete works around us. It's all about finding beauty in things as they are. I know it's, it sounds different, it's a different mentality altogether. But yes, you will be able to find Wabi Sabi everywhere around you. 
you just need to take some moment and try to embrace this philosophy in your life. It will work wonders. And my whole art journey found a new meaning when I tried to embrace this wabi-sabi concept in my artworks. It was resonating well with my artworks. And myself, Sapna Nambudri, I'm a professional contemporary artist and I work with discarded plastics. And I try to create meaningful art forms using this discarded, uh, unnecessary lying things and try to create some sort of value in those. Not having pursued any sort of professional training on arts and business left me with a lot to learn and research throughout this journey. But my art career found a new meaning or a new direction when I found my style through upcycling. In fact, I created my own signature style and it gradually developed into my own career. At least few of you must be thinking, what is she saying? Is that even a career option? And especially in this era of competitive career option and people need everything perfect in their life. Perfect job, perfect vehicle, perfect house, perfect spouse, etc., etc. And in this era, she is talking about taking creativity as a career. You must be thinking. If you're thinking, don't worry, you're not alone. I get to face such questions quite often. But fortunately, yes, proudly, that's my career. And I get to do my career with lots of joy, happiness, and passion. Of course, it didn't happen overnight. But how did it happen? Fortunately, I had this willingness to learn. I had passion, consistency, and dedication to what, towards what I was doing. You will be hearing these four words throughout my narration of my art journey, but these four factors played the key role in shaping up my career. While growing up, I didn't have any clue about this artistic career. I didn't see anyone around me taking up art as a career option. So obviously I didn't aim, my amb ambition was not to become an artist. In fact, I didn't have any ambition. I just went with the flow. I was going with the flow, what, I, what my friends were doing, my parents were suggesting, and I was okay with that. But obviously I got this creative instincts from my mother. I grew up seeing uh, her doing some creative things always. And my house will house, uh, this showcase will be filled with lots of creative things. I grew up seeing her doing that. Thanks to her for that. And my uh, sister happened to attend a summer holiday workshop where she learned about glass painting. And one day she taught me this. I, I guess it was during my 12th grade vacation. And she taught me the basics of glass painting. And I must tell that I fell in love instantly. So my mother was kind enough to take me to this uh, one and only arts or craft store at that time in my locality. And I went there. I had good conversation with the people standing there, I mean, the storekeeper there, to know about basic techniques, about the paints and things that I can use to create something. Without doing an art course, I could get the information to create something. I came back home and I will do experiments on everything that is lying around me, literally anything and everything. And that's how it developed it, developed that painting or glass painting as a hobby. So that's how my school days went. And after 12th grade, my friends were opting engineering and my parents suggested, of course I did engineering. Uh, proudly I completed that and I got this brilliant offer as campus placement from the software giant Infosys Technologies. So happily, me as a software engineer in Infosys Technologies in Bangalore campus, life set, but here comes the twist in the story. I didn't have much of a clue about what I was doing. I didn't enjoy what I was doing. I didn't feel comfortable sitting in front of the system, doing coding, which I was not at all, I didn't have any clue about what I was doing. But later I understood that it was program coded for Daimler Chrysler, but still I have no idea what I was doing at that time. But, the days passed and something 
strike my mind and i understood then and there that this is not for, meant for me that career was not meant for me but my friend i was surrounded by this good bunch of friends and they kept me pushing and i survived for a few more years and gradually i started feeling that i should engage myself in something creative and i started taking up the old paints and brushes again soon i got married to this wonderful soul who still stays strong with me with this crazily ambitious uh software engineer turned artist so we got married and we started a new chapter in bangalore in our small home so when i was going to the office my usual office hours will be like this when i st uh, when i start my day and go through the uh, bangalore traffic to reach my office my day start by thinking how how i will create something in the evening so starting from the beginning of the day i will be planning myself to create something or complete my work that will be totally related to my creative path so the days passed and i kept creating and these evenings are the most productive time of my day not just productive it those hours gave me ultimate joy and happiness so i enjoy i look forward for those half an hour or one hour and those moments were precious for me i kept creating and fortunately i was able to be part of a couple of group shows it was not a big event but it was in a well established place and uh, it was happening at karnataka karnataka chitrakala parishad and i was fortunate to be part of a couple of group shows and ultimately i am finding joy and i feel like this is my thing this is my path or this is where i find happiness and joy so that side of me i thought i should polish my skills more interacting with all these artists around me i felt like i was part of being a part of them as well and soon i realized i should polish my skills and uh, i kept painting so i would dedicate every day few minutes for this painting and also during that time for international women's day i was able to join this whole bunch of ladies it was uh, this was an organization under karnataka government and they had done an event it was a large event it was related to uh, international women's day and i was fortunate to be part of that event as well and i definitely had a very limited number of artworks i didn't know what i was doing i didn't make any much big plans to exhibit it was just a normal day but definitely i participated in that and to my luck there was one angel lady who came and she was interested to buy one of my artwork i don't know what attracted her to that artwork but she was interested to buy i was overjoyed i don't still have words to explain that joy and i don't know why this high highly paid infosys job or this five digit big salary from the infosys job didn't give me that much of a pleasure till that day i was over the moon i was so happy at the end of the day i think that moment gave me the realization when i keep creating at least someone will be there to like my work and will be willing to invest their time energy and money on my work and the days passed by in 2010 we were blessed with our daughter shraddha and just before that during the maternity leave i remember i had the most intimate time with the paints and brushes till then i created a good number of work and i couldn't believe that spending some dedicated time with these things would give me this this much results that i can i can proudly say that i have created so then uh, after the delivery we i went back to bangalore and um, i had this perfect plan oh i must tell i must tell that i had this perfect plan how to rejoin my work so before that was that plan was made just before the delivery so the plan was like this for 6 months i will be taking off from the job and after 6 months we will be keeping a maid 
like a stay at home maid and um, once the daughter once my daughter turned one year we'll be putting her in a daycare this was a plan made because i have seen my colleagues are in front of Info infosys campus fortunately we had this daycare and i have seen parents dropping kids in this uh, small stroller or this bag kind of thing so i also had this perfect ideal plan made but as soon as i reached back bangalore i don't know what had happened my motherly instincts had played a role and i was like a cranky baby i didn't want to leave my daughter like that and go to office so the situation has changed like this by 6:30 my daughter would wake up and i will be busy getting ready to the office a quick breakfast cooking lunch eating food pumping breast milk etc etc by 6:30 in the evening or 7 in the evening after the long working hours after all the bangalore traffic i will be reaching back home just to see that my daughter will be getting ready to go to bed so these days passed and i don't know how i survived all those months but literally i was out of my mind and i couldn't uh, concentrate on my work every every hour i will be calling to uh, this maid to check if she is okay i'm talking about a 7 month 8 month old baby then i push myself for few more months my husband understood my situation and we both discussed and decided that at least few more months or few more years in fact i will take a break from the software field and will take care of the baby once she is okay enough to go to a daycare or a play school i will restart the job this was the plan b okay and we did that finally when the when i put the resignation paper i felt like this whole weight was taken off from my shoulders i finally felt freedom i was so happy and i, I still doubt that I, even i didn't have a slightest bit of regret at that time so the next day since the next day i i just started my day as usual and um, instead of do, going to work whenever my daughter is asleep i would sit and paint so this was the most hap happiest moment i could see my daughter moving i could see my daughter smiling and growing up alongside i could cherish these small moments while i am creating my own uh, my own small interest i am developing this interest so those days passed for few months and while doing that i thought i should explore the social media so the fact is till that point i was not even in facebook or social media uh and i started this uh, social media profile facebook profile after a few days i thought i will just share few photos of what i had done till that time and in the initial phase or during that time each and every comment from your relatives or from your friends means golden words for you so that was like a confidence booster for me to keep creating and through my friend i came to know about this option about facebook page and i created my own facebook page and i named it dreams my world of colors and experiments of course i was doing experiments with colors so still the page's name is that and i started sharing these uh, photos of my creations this is where the social media came came and played the major role in shaping up my career because it was a vast world out there i would spend 3 hours or maybe 1 hour painting and 1 hour polishing my skills online polishing my knowledge how to share this work and how to connect with other people connect with other like minded artists and gain knowledge so social media helped me in all these skills i would definitely suggest every creative person it is not at all an excuse or it is not at all a, an option if we are living in this time because we have this huge opportunity in front of us so we need to learn to utilize that so social media helped me in all these situations to connect with so many artists and crafters around my location and globally 
Second, to build confidence in what I was doing. Third, polish my skills and learn a lot of knowledge throughout every day I will learn something new. So whenever I'm sharing these photos, I started getting good feedbacks. And I explored this opportunity to share the photos in various groups, which are dedicated to various arts and crafts happening around the city or around the places. I got good connections with all the crafters and artists around me, around that place in Bangalore. Also, this gave me a huge knowledge that yes, there is people out there, there is people in some part of the world, they are doing or they are taking up creativity as a career, or they are doing handmade businesses. And it is just like any other business. In fact, we all are in business. Like basically, what do we do? We learn some skill, put it out in our resume, we present it to our employer, and ask them to take us for this skill set. That's what we do. With the artistic talent, we create something and present it to the world. If someone likes it for what it is, they tend to buy it. This is exactly the same thing that artists is also doing. In fact, any other art field, take it as singing, dancing, theater, everything is kind of the same framework. And I believe that these art, art forms need to have some audience to see, to appreciate, to get that connection. We don't need to just sit and paint and keep it in my own home. At least for me, it didn't give me pleasure. For me, I needed feedback from the audience. I, I value that moment and I appreciate them for doing that. So Facebook gave me, or this social media gave me that knowledge. And with that knowledge, I practiced every single day. And slowly I could realize that my interest is not just an interest anymore. It is turning, it is turning to be my passion because I was passionate in every single thing I was doing. I was putting my heart and soul in it. And with that passion, so I would say this finding your passion is the first basic thing in order to start a creative career and, or an entrepreneurship around this creativity because you might have lots of interests. Turning this interest into a passion will be the game changer. Once you realize the passion, with that passion, you can start creating. And those passion, those creations will reflect your energy. So now I have my passion ready. And with that passion and with that enthusiasm, I created, I kept creating a lot of work. And there were lots of opportunities. There were lots of events happening in Bangalore not just events, through these arts and crafts group, people started asking for my works. And I was over the moon because I, I kept doing what I like. And somewhere or the other, people are willing to invest their time and money in my work. And uh, during these days, I also understood that polishing the skill does not need any uh, dedicated day or dedicated time in the during the daytime you can do it on the go so while i do my creations i also balance or i also made sure that i spend some time to market these work or to polish these skills or to showcase the work and the days passed i fortunately started selling the artworks I won't call artworks that time because I was creating many things. I didn't have focus on one line of work. I, I started creating a lot of things, but the base would be glass painting technique. And then I started creating merchandise products. I started showcasing on various flea markets, exhibitions, and various events happening in and around Bangalore. It was definitely hectic days because I had the small one-year-old, two-year-old baby at that time. So handling with her was a task, both for me and my husband. So when I hear uh, or when I get messages from people 
saying that they have kids or they have so many difficulties just to kick start what they kick start doing what they like i would say you won't get any perfect time to start what you're doing they the time will change and there will be some or the other hurdles around you or in front of you just start then and there do what you like that will give ultimate joy and happiness so when i attended these flea markets i started it doing regularly uh, at least once in two weeks i used to participate in any of the event and i started getting this direct conversation or direct interaction with the clients and that gave me huge experience because i could see how they react to handmade works and what is their need what they like so now that i can work on two different sets few things that i like to create and few things that the audience like from me so i divided these works like this and i continued this after some months i would say facebook gave me yet another important information that there is one website or online platform out there where you can exhibit and sell your handmade products i still remember the most unprofessional email that i had sent to them asking if it is possible to showcase uh, my works as well so they replied saying yes that uh, that my marketing places for handmade products as well and uh, that time we had to manually write and attach all the photos and its description and list on that platform but it's a completely different feeling when you finally see your work listed on that gallery and uh, that itself gave me huge motivation to create more i didn't have much clue about how to update online platform or how to price the artwork how to add description about or stories about this artwork i i was total novice in all these fields but still i thought i should give it a try then all of a sudden i'm getting this message after few months of joining this platform that i am selling two of my artworks i sold two of my artworks that too the first order is flying to australia i was over the moon i was literally jumping up and down but the next moment i realized we don't know how to pack an artwork we don't know how to ship an artwork so that is the next moment of realization but this motivation or this happiness that i gained from selling these artwork it's not about the money there it's not about the money on selling that artwork it's about the feeling that something that you did with your hand with your interest with your happiness love and passion somebody else sitting in the other side of the world is willing to buy from you so that feeling itself was out of the world and thankfully we both managed to pack it well and ship it fortunately at that time we didn't have to ship it to australia we just had to ship it till mumbai where the head office this uh, website is and they will sh ship the international uh, they will make the international shipping every week so successfully completed the first international order and that was just a beginning of a huge online journey for me life was going well i was finding joy and happiness because i was sitting at home doing what i like and seeing my daughter grow while participating in this flea market i must also say that it's not always this pleasant happy moment you will come across lots of unpleasant moments as well so this is where wabi sabi comes to play because you can somehow polish yourself to take up those instances or those incidents and embrace those things those insecurities or vulnerabilities will make you work more will make you create more and more unique works i did that when i started doing glass paintings a lot i even developed into few more product um, opportunities i i wanted to explore that as well i started creating wall hangings wall clocks wall trays customized name plates etc then 
I wanted to explore the possibilities of similar medium, just like glass. So out of curiosity, without any particular reason, I was always hesitant to throw these plastic bottles. And I had this pile of plastic bottles lying around. I thought I should give it a try. I should just try that medium because it looks similar. And I thought I will take that piece of plastic bottle and create something out of it. And uh, what I created was a piece of jewelry. But the jewelry turned out beautifully. What I was lacking was confidence. I was not at all confident to showcase this artwork or this work in front of people. Because somewhere inside me, I was thinking that it's just a piece of trash. It's just a piece of discarded plastic. <coughs> Excuse me. So I thought it's not good enough. Also, through, throughout these flea markets, when I exhibit this plastic <coughs> earring, people would say, wow, that looks gorgeous. And they would ask me the material. As soon as I say that it's plastic, I can see the change of reaction and they would pass. So at that moment, I thought my confidence was also going down. And I abruptly stopped creating those plastic bottle earrings. So those were my vulnerabilities. I was feeling so insecure about that artwork that I was creating. It was kind of a wearable art. But then in 2014, life had some other interesting surprises for us. My husband, <coughs> my husband got this opportunity in Qatar. So this is yet another new chapter for us. We decided to move. We decided to relocate with our daughter. And the first thing I searched online was uh, arts and crafts happening in Qatar, in and around Qatar. And I found this wonderful platform that is Qatar community. So I was just waiting to come here and start searching for opportunities. I was sure that I'm not going back to software field. So I came, we came here in September 2014. And then the first thing I had, I did was write to them and ask about a membership or if they will be willing to give me a membership. They were so happy, um, not them, I was so happy. And soon after that, I became a part of this wonderful community. We landed here on September. On October 2014, I was part of this first handmade market which happened at Katara for me. This was, Katar community is a wonderful platform where you get to meet a lot of artists and crafters from around the world. And fortunately, Qatar had the collaboration with Katara where we can do uh, handmade markets on every alternate Fridays. So I was also part of this community and I'm still part of this wonderful community and I'm always proud to say that. So this Qatar community gave me yet a brilliant opportunity. It, it was literally an opening of a new chapter because the audience is different and the platform is different. So I also polished myself to create artworks or create works that the audience here will enjoy. But the game changer was not my creation. It was an advice from my close relative on pricing. He advised me how I can value my artwork or how a handmade work should be valued. And that was a game changer. I went to Katara, Katar Art Market, and with his advice, I had priced all the artworks accordingly. And for my surprise, there were people willing to buy those artworks. I made lots and lots of Doha skyline paintings and paintings which <coughs> highlighted Qatar's landscape and culture. Since I was, I had the background of painting on glass and also uh, plexiglass looks similar to glass. 
I started working on this wonderful medium, which looked just like glass, but it's not breakable. Then I started making more and more artworks on this medium. Throughout these exhibitions, I would interact with uh, artists and crafters and also other audience where never did they ask me <coughs> about my graduation. Excuse me, guys, I need to get water. Yes. So throughout these days, never did I face this question on uh, about my graduation or about my final graduation. And that gave me the confidence that I was always skeptical about calling myself an artist because I always thought that graduating from a fine arts school or a university matters a lot. Throughout these days, the audience gave me the confidence boost or the audience pushed me to create more and to take chances or take risk. And one fine day, I came to know about this wonderful platform, Instagram. And Instagram surprisingly was like heaven for me because I got to meet lots of artists on visual arts medium. And I realized that it's just not painting one face or on or one landscape in one particular style. It's about lots of other creative sides of it, other techniques, other mediums. And it was a wonderful learning ex experience for me. Every day I would learn something new. And through Instagram, I came to know that there are artists exhibiting on online platforms. So now comes the role of the big online platforms. Till that point, I never had visited any of the art gallery. Uh, yeah, I had visited Karnataka Chitrakala Parishad, but other than that, I haven't been, uh, visited any of the galleries just because I didn't have the confidence to go. Or uh, so, let alone the fact that I, I wanted to exhibit, the confidence that I needed was not there. And that moment, I, I realized this online platform is perfect for me because I can see artists around the world. I can see the artworks, more than thousands and ten thousands of artists exhibiting their talents on these uh, uh, online platforms. And I learned about various art techniques and art materials. So since it was a global platform, the way I could polish my skills was also different. I enjoyed every bit of it. So I started creating artworks that I could also feel confident in presenting on this online platform. So first few months after joining, so first few months after joining this online platform, I didn't update my place or I just registered and kept there. But after a few months, since I started making few more artworks, I, I learned myself how to take photography, how to edit that, and how to upload on these online platforms. I did that. Few months later, again, on this platform, I am getting orders. This was something else for me. So I thought yet again, it's, it's proving that when you put your energy and interest and passion on this, you will get the result. So I thought I should make, I should be making more and more meaningful artworks. It took some time for me to find my own style. Definitely it won't happen overnight. I get a lot of questions asking, how do you find your style? Not just on art, on any creative path, Creating a niche or creating or finding your own style is a game changer or is an inevitable moment when you realize that there is value in your work. So finding that moment took some time. I tried various mediums, various techniques, because only then you will realize the thing that you are meant for. 
So it took some time and I polished uh, on the go. I was polishing my skills. So it was a win win situation there. And throughout these days, the whole companion, I, I didn't notice that I had this companion of discarded plastics. Without any reason, I kept piling up these bottles. So one fine day, I thought, this was my old buddy. I used to make jewelry with it. Why can't I create artworks with it? I did lots of experiments and I started creating a lot of experiments. So in the initial stage, it was just out of curiosity that I found my love for this plastics. It was just a mere curiosity or uh, to try something new with this flexible, vibrant medium. But the days passed and I happened to read this uh, disheartening or disturbing fact about plastic pollution. So it was like this. By 2050, our oceans will be filled with plastics more than fishes. Are you surprised? Don't be surprised because you have lots of more facts. According to the Guardian, since the past 70 years, can you guess the amount of plastic that had been manufactured? It is 8.3 billion tons of plastic that had been manufactured in the past 70 years. And only 9% had been recycled. Not finished. Worldwide, every minute, that is every minute, 1 million plastic bottle has been bought and 2 million plastic bags has been bought. And can you guess the work life of this plastic bag? It is just on an average of 15 minutes. So this plastic bag has been created for a purpose of 15 minutes and then has been dumped and it will lie there for another hundred and four hundreds of years. There is one more interesting and very much disturbing fact. That is an average person will consume 70,000 microplastic every year. Just think about it. These plastic bottles that we dump, we don't know the uh, aftermath or the story after that. We just dump it on the bin. We don't know where it ends up. They might end up in the ocean. And after years of reaction with the salt and water and the climate, it will become microplastic. It will end up in the ocean and the ocean life will consume that. And ultimately it will reach to us humans. So these were some of the facts that I read very accidentally and I think I'm a, I was meant to read those. Soon I started realizing that it won't, the situation won't change overnight, but we need to find some alternatives. And as a person, as an individual, as me, I cannot create a whole change in the world, but I can take small steps and later it can be, become a bigger path or a bigger step that others can also take up. So it was meant to be a small change. And each of these baby steps will count. I realized that. And every day I woke up with this motivation in my mind to add value for these discarded plastics. I thought, and this gave me the knowledge that definitely upcycling can become a brilliant business model. It need to have that business model so that the production, the production side will also get affected and they will start realizing that even the mineral water or water companies are not creating the water, they are just creating the bottles. So each in, uh, individual need to take that initiative. It was kind of a huge realization for me. But it was of course challenging because I was working with this unconventional material and I was working with all sorts of unconventional art techniques and styles. So that was a challenge for me. But definitely I enjoyed creating these works. I started creating small sculptures which was a series of three artworks and I named it Freshwater Pearls. And to my surprise this was the first series to get collected to one of a brilliant collector. It didn't go to the same place, but it went to different places. And I'm so proud that in, it went all together. And it's proudly part of a private collection now. 
So that motivated me to know that there is value in these artworks. And these online platforms definitely played the major role in it. Otherwise, I would have never guessed or I would have never imagined myself taking these artworks, going to a physical gallery, proudly presenting my artworks, saying this is made up of plastic because I didn't have the confidence at that time. But when I did this, it was like a revelation or it was so empowering that something that I create to elevate the value of these bottles have made a change or have made an impact. That was so empowering for me. Then I kept doing more and more series or uh, collections of artwork. In the past five years, I have worked on various uh, themes, but mostly on ocean life, because I still realize, or I still strongly believe that if we don't work for it, this study will become a fact. By 2050, we will be facing this. Our ocean will be filled with more plastics than fishes. Then I started incorporating more and more bottles in each of my work. So nowadays I have two bottles to 150 bottles in each of my work. What you see behind me has more than 150 pet bottles in that. And this was part of my first solo exhibition and I, I had named it Plastic Waves. It literally looks like plastic going as a wave, but it has another side of a story because in Pacific, there is a patch of uh, plastic that is floating. It is just garbage and it is damaging all the ocean life in that particular area. And I work on coral reefs as well. Because of the global warming, the sea uh, ocean water temperature is rising. And because of that, the coral reefs are getting instinct or dead. So just like for us, the coral reef is the biggest ecosystem for so many marine lives. Once it is dead, then that ocean life, then that part of the ocean is dead as well. So all these is kind of a chain reaction. You can try to take small steps, which will go and will impact or create impact in one or the other way. Will I be able to make a change altogether? Definitely I'll be make, able to make a small change. As, not as an individual, but collectively, we will be able to make a bigger change. Each person willing to take small steps at a time can make a bigger impact. So what we need is we practical upcycling solutions. There can be, the, the, still there are lots of innovative ideas starting up in many parts of the world we still need more and more initiatives or upcycling solutions or business models that can create solutions for so many, uh, uh, so many issues that we face just because of this plastic pollution. And I'm sure these will create sustainable impacts or sustainable alternatives for that, so that we can create a better planet or we can give a better planet for the coming generation as well. And that's how the sustainability path I took and the uh, Art Finder or Saatchi Art Gallery or these galleries played a major role in my, in my art journey or taking my art, artwork to the very next level. And in 2018, Art Finder listed one of my artwork to be the best uh, for that month. That was like, oh my God, I cannot, I still cannot explain that feeling. Uh, I can maybe relate to the moment when I received the first order, maybe something similar to that. I was over the moon and uh, I didn't expect that. It was something huge for me because getting a recognition on that big platform with more than 10,000 of artists from around the world, your artwork that you made is getting recognized as one of the best for that month. That was huge for me. And during that time, I happened to see this call for artists for Tokyo International Art Fair, and again, through social media. So when I saw that, I just wanted to try my luck. I prepared my CV and uh, 
I collected all the data with the photos that I had at that time. I submitted my application and soon I received the acceptance call. I was thrilled and the next moment I realized we don't know how to participate in a global art fair. And that was again a learning curve. We searched and we, uh, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have any um, contact point or reference point to ask or how, how can we uh, go to Tokyo and exhibit there. But we did everything. We searched everything online and we made it happen. We means me and my husband. Of course, at that time, my daughter was seven and I had a one-year-old boy. When I say that, I still cannot believe that we pulled it through successfully because I was carrying this one-year-old boy and the artworks. We traveled all the way to Tokyo to exhibit 20 of my artworks, created everything out of plastics. It was the proudest moment of my life. There were lots of artists from around the world and collectors from around the world. And I couldn't believe my eyes, people spent minutes and hours on my near my artworks asking about the stories asking about the connection or trying to connect with those artworks those were so empowering and i felt so blessed to be able to do that then tokyo exhibition happened it was a two day event even i was fortunate enough to sell the artworks as well we came back that october uh I also got the opportunity to do my first solo exhibition here in Katara. Katara Art Center was the platform where I could exhibit another 20 of my work named under the series For the Planet. I, uh, this ocean wave, plastic waves, one and two were part of it. And I had 18 other artworks as well. It was a one month show and I had, I received a huge amount of appreciation for that because I was skeptical at one point since I was using these plastic bottles, but the amount of appreciation that I received was tremendous. It was like, it pushed me for so many, so many years to come. And that gave me again, the confidence boost to apply for yet another art fair and, apply, and I applied for Amsterdam International Art Fair, which happened last year. And we all traveled with my artworks and the kids. That was yet another opportunity. And I would emphasize on the fact that it all happened, not just because I was creating at my home. It happened because my creation was going hand in hand with the marketing and the learning curve that is happening side by side. So it was kind of a balance. It was kind of, uh, you know, finding that uh, perfect line between the creation and the marketing part or the learning had to go through. We won't stop the, uh, learning because every moment something or the other is changing and we need to get that update or we need to update ourselves. And that happened in 2019. Fast forward. Here we are in the COVID season. So by March 2020, I decided to create few artworks slowly. Then these online platforms started showering me with orders. I kept myself busy and I am so happy that all these orders kept me, so, kept me sane throughout these days. I was so busy and I made three collections of artworks and more than two series which has more than 10, 10 artworks in each collection are already in their own homes or part of private collections. So these, this COVID situation didn't impact me just because I had this creative right brain working, also the left brain working for the admin works. More than anything, just keep aside all these artworks, creation or selling part there is one big thing happened to me and that will be the highlight of the season because i was so honored when one of my artwork was presented as a study reference for the students at hampstead fine arts school which is a university based out of london 
me, I haven't gone to a fine art school or I'm not even graduated from a fine art background. At one point of my life, I even questioned myself to call myself an artist. Here I am presenting my work before this art students from an art university in London. I was like over, overjoyed or I was so honored to get this, that opportunity. And by now, you must have realized that most of the opportunities, most of the opportunities came searching through these online platforms and social media. If used wisely, I would definitely tell if used wisely, you will be successful in creating your own brand around your creations. That is for sure. Also, on the go, on the go, you should definitely learn that you need to multitask if you want to be an entrepreneur or if you want to take up this creativity to the next level, you need to learn to be an entrepreneur. You should do different tasks. As in my case, I create, I take photos, I edit those photos, I update that on the sites, on different sites, on different days, and I create stories for those artwork. Then I interact with the clients. When I get order, I pack the, pack the artworks. I create YouTube tutorials, I create Skillshare classes, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to learn and utilize your, utilize your time wisely to invest your time and energy in all these things. But I'm sure you will gradually learn it because if you have that interest and willingness to learn, you will be able to dedicate your energy in all those things. And gradually, you will not find any excuse or nothing will stop you in finding that joy in pursuing your dreams. 10 years ago, in 2010, I would have never dreamt me as an artist or a professional artist. But here I am talking to you, exhibiting my artworks and creating my original artworks and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Also, I have no clue what another 10 years has in store for me. But I'm sure even in the next 10 years, I'll be happy and content because I know I'll be doing what I love and I love what, do, what I, I'm doing. So I would definitely tell each of you to take this to the next level with that passion and with that energy because nothing, nothing else will motivate you this much. Nothing else can keep you going or nothing else will inspire you every day to chase your dreams. I'm so grateful to each one of you for taking your precious time on this weekend and joining me to hear this story. And I'm so thankful to Nisha for giving me this opportunity. I think I will leave this to you guys now. Before that, creativity is contagious pass it on. It's not my quote. Some great person told that, but I'm borrowing it today. But that was my task for today. And I believe that I did at least some sort of justice for that quote today. So as an ending note, I would say each one of you, don't wait for that perfect opportunity or perfect creation to get started. Try to embrace Wabi Sabi. There are so many imperfect, imperfect moments out there. Try to create your own opportunities and get started because there are lots of miles to go before you sleep. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Swapna. And thank you for giving me so much, you know, uh, these inputs on social media because today I have a session on how to use social media and I can give, uh, you know, your example or your story as an example. Thank you so much for sure, the session. Yeah. Now, thank you, Nisha. we have already seen the artwork behind you. Is there anything yeah. else that you can please show, uh, you know, that you have created out of those waste plastic bottles? Yes, something? yes. Uh, there, uh, actually, there is a whole room, but since I cannot take everything there, uh, this is also something. It's, it's a patch of coral inside this cloche. So everything is made out of milk bottles and jars. Okay. And this is... Uh, this is a recent work. It, it has more than 10 bottles, 10 to 15 bottles used in it. I, I haven't painted this uh, yet, 
and I'm planning to keep it as it is because it has its own vibrancy and it looks just like glass. It is based on the sea animal and everyone asks me about the source of inspiration. I would say look around you because we are filled with inspiration all around us and the nature is the biggest inspiration. Absolutely right. And Sopna, we have received some questions here. Uh, yeah. We have a listener here who, who says that she is an ambidextrous artist. She paints with both hands. Okay. Yes. But then yes. she, is, uh, she feels terrible sometimes when her artwork does not turn out well. So what she wants to know is, does she have to practice it daily uh, to get a fine output or what, what, what sh should uh, she be doing? Of course, practice every day is a key for, you know, uh, I would say what will be your uh, view about the perfect artwork? Because I wanted to um, talk about this as well, because since childhood, we are conditioned in a way that perfect artwork will be neat and, you know, realistic and things like that. So since childhood, what we see is even in a drawing class or an art class, what we will be given, handed out a paper with a design and we are asked to copy that exact thing. And once you succeed in getting that same realistic picture, you are a good artist. But once you don't succeed, you have room for improvement and you will be asked to practice more. And these kids will grow up thinking that I'm not good at drawing the, that exact same design. And one day they will practice and practice at some point, they will lose interest in practicing because they're never getting that eyes or nose or lips correct. And they will lose that happiness or that interest and will just stop trying it. So it is our perfect or our perspective about this perfection. If you're looking for a perfect picture, then you might have to work on that every day or maybe you can try changing that perspective a little bit. You can just enjoy the process of creating and see where it will take you. I think that will be the most uh, you, you know, empowering thing or you can create like that. Just let loose yourself and without any inhibitions, try creating every day and see where it is taking you. Don't think that you're wasting the paper or you're wasting the paint on the go. It's all part of this process. When you go to an art school or when you are learning something, you definitely need time and energy and materials for that. Just think that way. You are in the learning process. So try to spend some time every day and learn to see how this process is taking you. Don't think of the end result. Just enjoy the process and see where it leads you and find the ultimate happiness in the product that you gained at that end. And that will be the end result, not just the end result that you had in, in your mind. I think it, if you change that kind of perspective, maybe you, will, you can create more result. Also in this point of time, there are lots of platforms where you can create uh, the visual impact. We, you can um, document that process and people will be there curious to know how you're doing that with both your hands, because there are platforms like TikTok or even Instagram where people will be so appreciative or they will be curious to know how you will be doing with both your hands. So make it uh, more interactive or make it so interesting because it's, it's a unique talent to create something with both the hands. So use it wisely, use this platform and create out of it you yourself should start enjoying the process, not worrying about the neat or perfect result. That's absolutely right, Swapna. And uh, somebody here wants to know how to price your work and what is the basis for pricing? Yeah. Pricing plays a major role. For me also at the beginning when I, I started my uh, work, I didn't have any clue about pricing. The first thing that you can do is uh, just have a basic uh, or you can browse through lots of artists who is doing something similar or that, like your work, something similar style or technique, or you can uh, gain knowledge from those pricing criteria and rate yourself. 
if you're a beginner and if you are just starting with your creative career or just starting with an artistic uh, career you cannot price a, a one meter artwork at a thousand dollar because if the people or if the collectors see the artwork they should have something that is attractive with your career or that is attractive in what you're doing or what you're trying to convey so if you're beginning the career the first and ideal thing would be to go and research spend some time in finding out other artists who are doing similar works as yours then try to compare your work and your experience and the uniqueness of your work only you will be able to judge the uniqueness of your work then try to find a, an equation on your own like uh, the time you have spent the uniqueness of your idea the materials that you have used things like that and compare with its equation whether it's uh, matching or whether it's compatible with the amount that we had search or that we had known from other artists if it's compatible try to find an average of that and start from there gradually once you know that you are getting orders or you are able to sell the artworks you can raise up your margin and go with the flow I think that would be ideal. Okay. I think the answer is now uh, clear. And uh, which platform is more user friendly to sell your work? For, uh, there are various, so many platforms out there. For me, I don't, I'm not sure about many of the Indian platforms because I am mostly concentrated on these international platforms. I have felt this art finder and Saatchi art and Etsy are so user friendly. There are so many other platforms as well. There is singular art uh, and th many more galleries like that. But art finder and Saatchi fortunately doesn't have any listing fee. So even if you're a beginner or even if just to showcase your talents, you know, just to explore these uh, world, this new world of art, you can just upload the artwork and see and learn from other artists around you. I think they have changed their, um, you know, platforms a bit so that we need to, as artists, we have to apply with, uh, with our details and they will accept you or not. But on Etsy, Etsy is a huge platform and it's the one of the earliest platform. So they have a huge audience. Etsy is also a great platform, not just for artists, any creative person, anyone who is creating something. It's a great platform and uh, they charge you. There is a listing fee. And uh, so while you upload the artwork itself, there will be a listing fee. But for the other uh, two platform, definitely there is a commission. Just like any other physical gallery, when you sell your artwork, a percentage of commission will be taken from the price. But obviously you can price the artwork according to your wish so that you can keep in mind that there is a percentage of commission that is going to the gallery and price it accordingly. And um, one person here wants to know about some photography tips for social media platform or is there any specific photographer uh, you would like to mention about? You know, uh, I haven't uh, worked with any photographers yet. Uh, but for my solo exhibition, I had approached a photographer and he had done a brilliant job. But uh, for my normal uh, artwork photography, I do it by myself. And uh, I don't use any, uh, I use the app Snapseed. But other than that, I don't use any other special editing platform, editing apps. But using a good uh, DSLR camera or even for me, iPhone, phones work the best. Uh, Till now, it works fine for me. The only thing is it, you get the best works when you are in the daylight. Also, while editing, make sure that you don't make dramatic changes on the artwork because the artwork should look just like the original work. That I mean, the photo on the gallery or on the uh, website should look just like uh, the original artwork. So you can use that. And there are platforms like uh, obviously Photoshop or Picasa where you can edit the artwork and create, you know, the, with the mock setup where you can fit in the uh, artwork on an interior so that the uh, people can 
uh, get a basic idea about how the artwork lo will look on their wall. So these are the apps that I use. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. And how do you ship your artwork? I mean, is there any special process of ship, not shipping? What I would be interested in, how do you exactly package yeah. everything? Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, from the every every gallery will have their own packing conditions or packing guidelines, and we need to strictly follow that. So, uh, because it will take days or maybe weeks to reach the particular destination, so we need to carefully pack, and it will take another energy, uh, a whole energy of few hours for, from us. But it's all worth it because there are lots of chances of getting a, a damaged artwork. So we need to carefully pack each of the artwork. In my case, I need two or three layers of packing. Uh, it will be a glassing sheet or uh, it, it will look like a, a wax sheet. Then there will be bubble wrap or I use biodegradable uh, burlap or bubble wrap. Then there will be foam sheet. Then there will be cardboard. For my sculptural artworks, I need foam board in between so that the textures will not get compressed or there won't be any damage uh, on, the, on the textural surface and then pack it with the cardboard. So always make sure that you have a clue about uh, how about a dimensions of the box so that all these details need to be updated on the site and each gallery uh, works differently. There will be a uh, particular field where you can add the shipping details so the uh, client will be paying you for the shipping for this archie gallery uh, the gallery will be uh, paying the shipping so you don't have to worry about it so things are different once you get into those platform you will start learning yourself and uh, how do you get invited for an exhibition you have to uh, have an eye on those things there will be a particular time when they give out uh, calls. They will be calling for art artists. So at that time, you need to apply. You won't be getting called. Or once you get into that, you know, when you go to that circle, now that I had participated in these two exhibitions, I get calls through their contacts. I get calls from there or I get emails, invitations like that. But as an initial step, you need to keep an eye on the updates of the galleries or the exhibitions that is happening. And then once they start calling, uh, apply for that. So that you have the, uh, by that time, you can prepare the CV or the photos, everything is ready and apply for that. And uh, Sopna, one more time, could you please mention those groups that you had joined here? You were talking about some group named Qatar, Qatar, right? Yes. Yes, is yes. this Kat art? Kat art. It is Qatar plus T. Kat art. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's an active group of artists, right? It's an act. Yes, it's an active artist group. There is an uh, artist group for Indian artists. It is Wafi V A F I. That's also a group for a group with Indian artists. So these are the groups that I am part of. Thank you so much, Sapna, for sharing all these stories. And, you know, it was very informative for all those people. I think a lot of uh, ladies had joined. They wanted to know how to exhibit their work and what, how to, which platforms to use and where to join, where to go. So you have made yeah. it very, very clear. Thank you so much for the session. And as it is rightly titled, Wabi Sabi, you need to find yeah. beauty in all these small imperfections correct 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 exactly exactly thank you for quoting that perfectly nisha and thank you so much for this invite i'm so honored thank you so much thank you so much once again thank and you. as swapna said creativity is contagious so pass it on and toxopedia yes. is doing the same thing just pass it it on every Friday. So we will take a break now, not a break. We will, uh, I'll just sign off and we will meet again next Friday with a new trendsetter. Till then, have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.